So a round table conversation. Yeah. <laughs> Dr. Cannavale, David Schuster, nice to meet you. Cannavale, good to see you. David, Tony, and Bill. My pleasure. Nice to meet you. Mona. So to, uh, to get us started, uh, Tony has uh, agreed to sing a work song of his oh, choice. Oh, great. <laughs> the Tony, does it come with an interpretive dance? <laughs> no, no, I stopped that a few years back. Oh. Oh. Uh, so again, uh, this is a, a freewheeling, have fun, interrupt, um, speak loudly, tell jokes. Uh, it's, all, it's all good. Very different from what we've, uh, we've done before. Six experts. Employers. Academics. Government policymakers. They don't know each other. This is their unbiased discussion on America's employment crisis. Welcome to our conversation about the economic forces turning so many American communities inside out. We hope to shed some light on the underlying issues that are driving these changes while also highlighting some of the solutions that have been emerging. The idea is to help prepare current and future generations of American workers not only meet these challenges, but also succeed. We began in Indianapolis. We have another gut-wrenching story about the middle class and its workers tonight. A very large Indianapolis employer is now deciding to pack up and is taking its manufacturing facility to Mexico. Today, Carrier Heating and Air Conditioning decided to shut down its Indianapolis operations as a way to save money. After high school and I moved to Indiana, I went to work at Lowe's Home Improvement Store, and I worked there about a year and a half. And then uh, my uncle got me a job working with him at Carrier. That's it. That's my complete work history right there. My first day at Carrier, I do remember pretty well because I was pretty intimidated around people that have been here for 20 years, 30 years, 40 years. And I was just a kid, fresh-faced, 18 years old. I now make. 22.43 an hour. It allows me to live pretty good, very modestly. My family was encouraging of getting on a carrier. They always said, you know, being a young guy out of high school, if you can get in the door of a job like this and, you know, middle class job, manufacturing job, I just always pursued that with my family always being carrier and seeing the lives that they lived. I mean, they always had nice homes and cars, and so I wanted that too, so. On February the 10th, we were told that they were going to move operations at Carrier in Indianapolis to Monterey, Mexico. You know, we make good money there, they make good profits, so it was all a big shock. I had no plan past Carrier. That was it. That was, that was what I was going to do. The only jobs that, that you hear about anymore that are available and open are warehouse jobs where you're making 12 to $15 an hour. You're talking about people that put in their whole life almost into this company. You know, it was, it was it was a tough pill to swallow. These companies are going overseas and stay competitive. You know, we understand that. It's still not right. I have to come up with another plan, and I, I don't I don't have one yet. I don't think a lot of them realize how important these jobs are to communities and, and we are the middle class. Someone's got to be able to buy the stuff and if we're all poor. Everything is outsourced anymore so I am very scared for my children and their future. I mean I hope they follow more into their mother's footsteps who went to school, made good grades, got a college degree. I mean I always thought they could use me as an example to get into a job where you can work 40, 50 years and retire and be able to take care of your family. But I can't even do that. So there's there's no way that they're gonna be able to do a job like that. But then at the same time, I know it's even hard to find a job with a degree. It hurts and there's fear. And then at some point there's that, oh, what do I gotta do next? You're told you're gonna lose your job, but somewhere you've been doing your whole life, what do you, what do, you do? I mean, there's no handbook that shows you this is what you need to do, this is how you do it. And it's, it's sad, it's sad that what the future holds for our children and our grandchildren is it, sad. Carrier is not the only company to announce moving operations to Mexico. More than 1,000 workers learned their jobs were going away. The company plans to close its current West Side facility. This is just another story of the dwindling middle class in middle America. 
something that gets very little attention. It's tough and it's emotional. Congresswoman, if Katie and TJ were right here at the table with us, what would you tell them to do? I think the first thing that they've got to do is figure out what kind of training programs they can get into quickly to help them transition to a new skill set. It's unlikely that they'll be able to transition to another major manufacturing job. As we saw in the video, these jobs are leaving the country in mass. The employer is no longer the maternal, paternal guide, and the people on the video are working in the old paradigm. And the employer has moved into another definition of what the relationship of work should look like. One, one metric that for me summarizes a lot of this is that in the 1970s, uh, more than 70% of Americans uh, were people who had high school degrees or less. The majority of them were in the middle class. Now we live in an economy where 60% of the jobs require some formal education or training. Mm -hmm after high school. That is a sea change. That's an economic revolution. Oh, well, a bachelor's degree is what a high school diploma was during my parents' time of entering Absolutely. the workforce. Mm -hmm. the bachelor's degree isn't even enough for many of the jobs of today's economy. For me, there is a single fact. The baby boomer is somewhere between eight to 10 job shifts in their lifetime. The millennial will be like 20 job shifts in Heck, their they're lifetime. they're eight to 10 in a year. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right. And so what that, and what that means is that formal degrees are not going to be enough to help you to keep pace. Mm -hmm. We have to rely much more on an ability to do very rapid upskilling as you go from job shift to job shift. But you mentioned education. Does somebody who's going to make $20 an hour sitting in a driverless car, do they really need a traditional college education? What about two-year vocational training? Isn't the old paradigm for education is no longer appropriate? Absolutely. And, exactly. and, and I would say it's actually eight weeks, 12 weeks of vocational training. I think it's about capturing skill sets and less about the piece of paper. It's about what's the skill set that you can bring as you change from job to job. Think how risky it is for a person, all their effort until mastering a new sort of skill and then mm -hmm. hoping that someone's going to employ them in that skill. If an employer has to say, what can I commit to for the long term, they're not going to be able to commit to very much because they're not sure. But if a community of employers, right, like a, a sort of a regional aggregate, actually saying, we've all reduced our external investment in training, like, wouldn't a smart way be to pool our resources? And this is making real progress. In Rhode Island, 70 employers signed up saying they will hire people, this is through this Tech Hire Rhode Island, based on demonstrations of skills. If you can do the job, you can get the job. You know, in Arizona, where I live, we have um, Intel, one of the largest companies in the state. And Intel partners with Arizona State University, teaching students the skills they need while they're getting their degrees at ASU that allow them to intern and then transition to full-time jobs at Intel. The general trend is still that jobs are disappearing, that wages, at least for the middle class, are going down. Is the middle class disappearing? We had Katie say in the video, we are the middle class. Is the middle class going away? Absolutely. The new middle skill jobs are in healthcare, uh, white collar business services, office jobs, Tech. communications, mm -hmm. computers, Sales. and they mm -hmm. all require uh, some kind of formal learning beyond high school. It's only about 15% of males with a high school degree can make it nowadays. Females can't at all. And, and that new middle job sector is not growing as fast as we're losing the mm -hmm. old middle jobs. And what about volunteer organizations right. like AmeriCorps? In some cases, that can make somebody more employable. Absolutely. And, How do you stay and relevant? I, yeah, and the fact of the matter is you're 27% more likely if you volunteer to become employed. And it kind of makes sense. People see you contributing every day, being out, being visible, picking up new skills, and most importantly, collecting job references and, and building those relationships. But the other piece of this is pretty phenomenal, and that is if you are a high school dropout, the chances of you finding a job if you volunteer increase to about 51%. Wow. And if you live in a rural area, it's 54%. It's and one why thing, don't we though, look at it? I'm sorry, I know okay. you're running the conversation. But, okay. why but don't she's we look really wrong. <laughs> you are right. We all know what's really going on here. I think the other important part that people uh, sometimes uh, neglect is the role of the community college. When there is a nursing program, that's a yeah. two-year degree. Mm -hmm. And uh, they are highly skilled, compassionate, incredible workforce, and can make a $60,000 
a year living with a two-year degree. What I think you're seeing at community colleges across the country is a retooling to recognize the reality of the job demands that exist. They can actually finish their program without a two-year degree, but they come out with a certification right. for their skill set that allows them to go right into the workplace. Is that the new vocational school? That's right. Mm -hmm. So the community colleges are shifting to become more like a VOTAC school because right. of the need in the community. Now you really have to distinguish between what advice would you give a person in the system as it exists today versus how should we change the system. TJ can't change the system. TJ has to figure out how, how he navigates, how he mm -hmm. manages yeah. it. And let's say there was a major hospital system within commuting distance. Well, then, yeah, a relatively short course that allowed him to get into the first rungs of sort of the allied health professions and get a job there. That might be his best next move. That's different from saying how you should change the system. It is a perfect example to say TJ could find an opportunity within a healthcare mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. We have jobs from entry level all the way up to the Absolutely. CEO. However, it is the community colleges, it is the volunteer right. programs, mm -hmm. it is mm -hmm. the high school and college counselors get people into our healthcare industry. I agree with everything that's just been said, but I, I just want to uh, bring back something Deborah, Mona, and Chris, you've all said. Uh, think more about skills and maybe less about credentials. Let's say you were a project manager in construction and that job goes away. But there's a project manager job in a hospital. You probably have 85% right. of right. the skill right. sets. Right. So why send you back for two years so rather than identify for you that's for the one of the 15% that you need question. and fill it in? That's, great. that's, that's, that's great. for veterans, question. but yeah. it's mm -hmm. for a lot of people. Yes. We've still got to yeah. solve the problem of yes. rapid retooling. Yeah. We need a way for people when they develop the skills, that that can be recognized and the gaps can be right. filled rather than just this screen of like, oh, you don't have this specific degree, this exact work history, so we can't take a chance on you. Part of that is to stress some of what I would call the essential skills. Some people call them soft skills, I think they're essential skills. Working as a team member, right. working with people who speak differently, act differently. You gotta they're come to be... Congress with that. <laughs> <laughs> but right, they, right. But they, uh, Eastern Kentucky. We have an uh, excellent example of where we have some AmeriCorps members who are working with laid off coal miners. I don't think you could get a much more difficult, challenging mm -hmm. situation. Mm -hmm. Those coal miners are learning to code. They're learning to be uh, web developers. They're learning to be um, database administrators. Tech has a different kind of image problem. People think it's rocket science when actually many of these jobs, they really are the, the middle-class skilled assembly jobs in a world of digital products. They are much more accessible to people than you think. I mean, people aren't just like <laughs> sitting around waiting for you to like pour skills into their head or give them a handout. People are energy, passion, creativity. People are assets. Like I see the two people on the screen and I see people with a lot of resilience. People like they were very thoughtful in their analysis of the situation. I see people who can do so many things that our country needs doing, right? People who say that there's not gonna be enough work. I mean, I mean, work is solving problems. Right. And last I checked, we haven't run out of problems. Oh, that no. is right. Absolutely. If we scare each other enough, because I'm old school on this, and what is scary in the current presidential election is we've got a populist rebellion on our hands. As Wait, is know, there a presidential election? <laughs> yes. <laughs> on TV. Noticed. Actually, no, it's a TV miniseries. Ah. <laughs> and it is in the end, once you get past the ugly stuff, it is about jobs. And in a modern 21st century economy, jobs keeping jobs, getting jobs, getting the next job, is about skill development. We need to get much better at how to have learning happen than what is the case today. And it's going to take this whole sequence of things to be able to systemically change these outcomes. And I also think there has to be a bit of optimism that goes in the strategy and the execution of developing and deploying the American workforce in a way that is productive for business and productive for the individual. The employer needs the workforce, the workforce needs the opportunity, and the United States of America needs this sustainability. All the things we associate now with the internet and think, oh, for the first time ever we can do it, and we have now like a billion times the ability to sort of organize kind of information and in people that we did then. If we don't figure this out, it'll be, I mean, shame on us. And what I think you're more likely to see are other institutions around the country saying, how do we create a new American university that connects people to their job skills? How do we transform the community college to get these skill sets so that we can train the medical coders and the nurse assistants to become nurses? 
I think you see it happen community by community, not through large-scale public policy change. I want to thank all of you and just say one of the things that, that I learned is that um, if, you can, if you can take six very bright, articulate, thoughtful people who may have approached this issue from different perspectives but put them together, it is a really, really intellectually stimulating and intriguing conversation. And the other thing that took me by surprise is to hear how optimistic all of you are, to hear people who are influencers and heads of organizations be optimistic that it can be solved was really, really uh, breathtaking to hear. And it's frustrating that it doesn't happen fast enough. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but we the do need to speak. There are we and need to speak. Yeah. 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 Along the way. And there are millions who want to step up and make yeah. a contribution. Absolutely. I think that's yeah. the other yeah. piece of it. Thank you all very much. Thank I really you. appreciate yeah. it. Wonderful. Yeah.